And now we go. And we've got our two. Hey Ames. Hey. All good? Yeah. Awesome. Seriously? Welcome to another episode of Facebook Live. So today I'm gonna cover off on um, questions we or a particular question we get asked quite a while, especially at our workshops. Um, how do you invest in property um, for as little in some cases as fifty dollars a week, forty dollars a week? So I'm gonna go through a simple case study that um, we've taken from one of our one of our clients. So I'm gonna talk about a lot of numbers here. I'm gonna try and keep it as uh, simple and basic as possible. Um, value any questions. Actually, I don't even have a reader to be able to ask any questions, so I'll rely on the team here to give me any questions that you guys may ask. Um, any questions you guys may have regarding any of the information I'm gonna share with you. Um, so, away we go. All right, so, um, again, before you go and invest in any type of property and, and, and take into account what I'm gonna cover off on today, please, please, please get some advice around this space, okay? Um, come and have a chat to us first and make sure that it's something you can do you have the wherewithal, you know, financial um, ability to be able to do so before you go and make any decisions like this, okay? This is a real case study here. These are real numbers, real person. So, um, you know, it, it, it certainly is possible. All right, so I think we um, we looked at a property not long ago back in, what are we now? May, May this year, May, May this year, for purchase price of, can you guys say that okay? That's all good? Purchase price of $525,000, okay? I won't go into the specifics of whether that was house, land, apartment, townhouse, villa. Um, that's your total purchase price of the property, right? Now, for the sake of this exercise, I won't get into the specific details, but there are things like uh, when you purchase any, any type of real estate, there's always things like purchase costs, okay? They're usually made up of things such as um, stamp duty, which is a government duty paid by you, the purchaser, to the um, the government, okay. Another one of those beautiful taxes that we get hit with uh, when going in to a, a transaction like this. Um, and then there's usually things like conveyancing or solicitors fees, right? That's the coordinate the purchase, uh, the, the settlement of your purchase, and going through contracts and that kind of thing. All right. So for the sake of this, I won't get into it, but you're looking at um, you know costs to do that as well. All right. So you've got a purchase price of five hundred twenty-five thousand dollars, right? So let's look at the income that a property or an asset such as this would generate. Now in this particular instance here, we had a um, income, let's call it rent, of $21,403, which was equivalent of I think um, 400, and I will look at the, uh, the analysis, which is equivalent of $420 a week, okay? So that's per annum and 420 a week, okay? Which, by the way, is a, is a good rental return. You, you're looking for at least a 4% rental return on any asset, residential asset that you purchased, okay? So that's your, that's your income on, on, on a purchase. Then you've got things like expenses. Now, your biggest expense when you're looking at purchasing a property is always going to be your, the interest on your mortgage, okay? Now, this example that I've used here also assumes that we're borrowing 100% of the uh, of the purchase price and that includes your deposit which is used against the security of another property and also your purchase costs or what we call your closing costs the cost to close the transaction okay so in this particular example here if we um, look at the the expense here which is your interest rate your, your interest on your mortgage on loan in this particular case we had that as $27,518, okay, to be specific, per annum, okay? Please don't think that's per week, <laughs> per annum, okay? And that was based on an interest rate of, I think, 5.3%, 5 5 okay? So, that's your biggest expense going out, okay? I, mean, I know you're already thinking, oh my God, the rent's only 21000 a year, but I'm having to pay $27,000, um, $27,000, in interest already, right? Then your other expense when it comes to a purchase such as this is your um, your running costs, right? Um, to have a property, things like um, council rates, water rates, um, you know, building insurance, land uh, land tax. If you're looking at apartments 
or townhouses, let's say, where there's more than one dwelling on the site. Um, <coughs> you've got, you may have owners corporation, which is the old terminology for, for body corporate. So um, you've got expenses to run the property, all right? And in this particular case, our expenses per annum is $6,391 per annum, okay? So if you total that up, your cost to actually, um, the cost on the, on the mortgage per annum and to run the property, you're looking at roughly 33,000. I know we're gonna get to a stage here where I'm gonna be actually kneeling on the floor to actually write this, right? $33,909, right? So that's what you're out of pocket. That's your expenses going out. Now weigh this up against you of the rent going in and your shortfall, right? would be on something like this, and again, giving you real life figures, about $12,506, right? Which I think is equivalent of $240 a week, okay? So a lot of people will ask the question, my God, where am I gonna find $240 a week out of my pocket to invest in property, okay? Now, unfortunately, um, this is the, uh, the conclusion that a lot of people come to, and this is the simple math they do. They look at the purchase price, they look at the, um, the rent going in, right, against the purchase price. They have a look at their biggest expense, which is the interest on the mortgage, <coughs> plus the, the, the rental expenses, the running cost of the property. And they've worked out that, wow, I'm out of pocket 12 grand a year, or $240 a week. Now this is your pre-tax position, okay? So a lot of people would come to the conclusion simply, you know what, I don't have an extra $240 a week, so this is not something that's for me, okay? Nothing wrong with uh, you, 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 you know, your logic or how you've come to that conclusion, but you're probably missing some information, okay? So um, what, you, what people don't understand sometimes with, with property is that, and not that you should ever buy property for this reason, okay? Um, in my experience, the only reason you buy property is for capital appreciation, okay? If you look at anybody that's built a lot of wealth in real estate, um, it would have been, you know, especially if you're using a buy and hold strategy, right, and taking a more passive approach, it would have been based on the value of your assets appreciating over time, okay? Um, I've never found anyone that's built wealth in real estate by buying property that gives them, say, $10 a week, $20 a week positive cash flow, okay? If that's your strategy, uh, you just need to make sure, that's a great strategy by the way if you can have it, but make sure your properties are appreciating at the same time. Don't uh, compromise capital growth for cash flow, okay? Um, and that's not because I, I, I have just haven't found anybody, I've never come across anybody, and I, I know a lot of people, I've never come across anybody that's built sustainable wealth using a strategy that didn't include capital appreciation as a part of it, okay? So, you're out of pocket $240 a week. Well, how does that work? Well, one of the things that um, I'll, I'll bring to your attention is that that's your pre-tax position, okay? Now, what I'm gonna talk to you is about what we call your post-tax uh, position. So the government introduced a rule back, I think, in 1985 that basically allows you to claim any loss on a property, all right, such as this, any loss on a property off your taxable income, okay? So, a lot of people understand that terminology to mean negative gearing, all right? So what you're able to do is offset your taxable income with a, a loss such as this. So effectively what you're doing is instead of paying the tax that you're currently paying, or you may be currently paying at the moment to, to the government, and by law you need to do that, you're able to choose to get a portion of that and have that rebated back to you, okay? Going back into your pocket, um, based on a situation like this. Totally legal, you can look it up on the ATA website as well. In fact, I think that they give a couple of case studies on there as well. So, in this situation here, the purchaser was able to get a deduction, and I won't go through the specific deductions, but you're able to claim things like building depreciation, or a what they call a, a um, building deduction. So any, I think um, in this particular case, any building built after the 16th of September 1987, you're able to claim a 2.5% cost 2.5% of the construction price you're able to claim off your taxable income for a period of 40 years, provided it's used for investment purposes, okay? Uh, they call that your, um, your depreciation on the building. Then you've got things like fixtures and fittings, right? So most of the things that go into an investment property, such as carpets, win um, window furnishings, you know, blinds, 
rain shield oven, cooktop, dishwasher, white goods. Uh, they have a lifetime value and after a certain period of time they no longer have any value um, and you're able to claim those items if you understand the cost of that um, off your taxable income as well. So don't get into the mechanics of that. Again, go to the ATO website. They actually do have a list of all the items you can actually claim. We actually get um, quantity surveyors that go out there. They make a list of all the items that you can claim on a residential investment property and they put together what's called a depreciation schedule. And you can get one of them done. Um, you're going to need one, by the way, if you're going to do a, a tax return through your accountant. Um, I think they're anywhere from $300 to $400. Um, in, in, in some, some charge actually even a lot more. Get that done, give that to your accountant to do your tax returns. You only need to give it to him once and that'll be able to help him out for, for the coming years um, on the property. But on this example here, the, the total um, deductions and depreciation after tax, in this case here, were $15,000. So this is a credit that you get back from the ATO. So again, it included things like um, you're able to claim a deduction on your interest, you're able to claim a deduction on, on the, the building the building cost, the fixtures and fittings within the property, any loan costs, um, things like water rates, council rates, um, building insurance. These are all items that you can actually claim as a deduction. Your accountant will do the math and basically submit a tax return into the ATO where the ATO then will review all that and give you back a credit, okay? So in this case here, it was costing this purchaser $12,000 beforehand, okay? Uh, once they got their tax credit back, they got $15,000 back, so that's roughly $56 per week better off, okay? So not only have they purchased a really good asset here, that appreciates in this one here, I think we're getting some good appreciation here in double digits. Um, not only have they purchased a really good asset that's gonna put them in a good position in the next seven to 10 years, but they've also purchased an asset where in the first 12 months, they're actually earning $56 a week, okay? So, going back and having a look at this, just when, when you're purchasing a property, it's very simple to just do simple maths of rent coming in plus expenses, rental expenses, and interest on your loan going out, and then you work out whether it's in the negative or the positive. At your position before tax, and if you're employed um, and earning an income, you're you know, self-employed and obviously PAYG, pay as you go, pay as you go, actually you run your tax in different ways, but you need to look at the other side of the story, which is your position after tax, okay? Because done correctly, you will get a rebate back from the ATO, and you use that money to fund the shortfall on your pre-tax position. Now, I'll share with you, um, one on one, not necessarily not on on, the, on this one, how you actually can get that back without having to wait to the end of the year to do your tax returns. There's multiple ways that you can actually get that in your pocket beforehand, or um, more importantly, not have to pay that as you go. Uh, once you've got the property, okay? Because a lot of people will ask, yeah, Anthony, that's all great that I get it back, but where am I gonna find it to start off with, okay? How am I gonna find $240 a week if I don't have it, and then wait till the end of the year to get my tax returns back, okay? That, sensible question, but there are many, many ways that you can actually do that, all right? And I'm happy to sit down with you guys that come in and see us one-on-one -on -one and take you through that. So, again, $56 a week better off. Is that gonna impact anyone's lifestyle? People are putting money in your pocket, is it really gonna impact your lifestyle? Of course not, right? Now, in this example here, because I wanna give you all the information, right? In the second and third year, the the cost, I think, in this situation here, you're out of pocket like $40, $48 a week in this example. And that's because a lot of the things you get to claim in the first 12 months, you don't get to claim in the second and third year. But in this case here, I think it was 48 to $52 a week out of pocket. So if you think about that, I think I, I talked about this last week as well, What 40, $50 a week out of pocket is what? $8 a day? You know, I've already spent that on coffee this morning, <laughs> okay? So um, this is a real life scenario, real case study, real figures. Um, it is doable. Is it doable for everyone? Of course not, okay? There are things that, you need, that we need to take into account. But we'd love to sit down with you guys one-on-one, -on -one. come into the office here, meet with our investment advisors, and just look at your situation, look at your assets, look at your liabilities, and just see whether this is something that you can do. 
you may walk away saying, hey, you know what? At least I've run my situation with the guys from Wealth for Life and I know that I can't do this. But you get a little bit more reality on how all of this works. Or, if you're one of the, the, the fortunate ones, you're in a position where you can look at this. Okay, so if you've ever asked yourself, wow, I can't invest in property because it takes money out of my pocket. Well, clearly you can see here that it doesn't, okay, in this particular case study. So um, that's all for this week, guys. Send in any questions you've got, anything you want me to talk about, if you want me to go and cover off any other particular types of case studies or what something like this would look like after 10 years. We use, um, you know, some specific software, industry standard software, to, um, to do a feasibility on something like this. So we take all the information into account. We take a worst case scenario as well, okay? And when you're buying any type of asset, whether it be a business or a, a, a property portfolio or even you're getting into the share market, always use a worst case scenario, right? Factor in rising interest rates, factor in rent um, not increasing every year, factor in maybe a drop in income or a change in income. You gotta make sure that when you buy an asset such as this, look at the worst case scenario. Don't look at the economy when it's a good economy, okay? Anybody can make money in a good economy, okay? Anybody can hold on to an asset in a good economy. You need to be able to hold on to an asset when the economy changes. And if you're buying the right asset, especially the ones that um, you know we look at here, the right type of asset will continue to perform irrespective of what the economy's doing, okay? And that's really the true test of an asset too. Um, how you can create your own economy within your own within your own business or within your own family, okay, where you don't necessarily depend on what interest rates do or what your work income does and what things external to you actually do, okay? So you want to create a portfolio like that because then you're in control of where your portfolio is going. Not the RBA, not Westpac Bank, not your employer, or not situations and circumstances outside of your control. All right, guys, um, <clears throat> again, really appreciate it if you could share this post um, to your friends and family on Facebook. That helps a lot, uh, means a lot to us. And if any of you can uh, benefit from this information or you know someone that can benefit from this information, get them to give us a call and sit down and have a chat with us. You know, um, come in for a coffee. We we'll make a really good coffee, by the way. Um, and, uh, you know, we'll go through your, your, your situation. Everything's kept in private. Um, and just see whether this is something you can actually look at. Because... You know what? Most of the people that have done this, and we're going to share some of that. We're going to share some of those stories with you guys in the coming weeks. We're going to get some of the staff in here who have just got ridiculous results at such a such a you know a young age in their life to you know hardworking everyday Australians who were. Uh, and by the way, one thing I neglected to mention: this was based on an income of a hundred thousand dollars per year, right? Using the the tax the tax rates as of, that was done in May, so it would have been the um, 17, 18 tax rates, okay? So, most of the people that have achieved th these kind of results are actually people that never thought it was possible for them, okay? Because they had information that was missing. They, d they didn't have all the information. They had a certain amount of information, but they didn't have the rest, okay? So, um, don't think that this is something outside your scope, okay? Um, Come, come in, have a sit down with us. We'll take you through your own personal situation and give you a report um, that basically uh, details whether this is something that you can actually do. Okay, and think about it. If you've got an asset that, uh, if you bought the right asset, at, you know the right asset, by the way, it should double in value over the next seven to ten years. Um, so who wouldn't want an extra five hundred thousand dollars in their pocket over the next ten years? or a better way of asking that, can you actually save, after tax, $500,000 over the next 10 years? 50 grand a year. It's not something a lot of people can do, okay? So this is an opportunity for you to be able to look at that and say, you know what? If it's only costing me or making me you know, money in the first year, and even if it's costing me $50 a week for the subsequent years to get to you know, 500,000 in your pocket over a 10 year period, not a bad return especially if you don't have to do anything towards it as well. So, thanks guys, appreciate your time. Uh, again, if you could share this with your friends and family on Facebook, we'd really appreciate it. And I believe, what Cherie, we're, uh, we're in the running for the Property Investors Award. Yes, we are. Okay, and we find out about that when? In two days, on the 30th. Good. So make sure you buy a copy of your property, your investment property magazine. Investment and. Property. 
fingers crossed we are there featured as the winner but it's pretty impressive to be a finalist because we um there's only 14 finalists for our category so we're pretty thrilled yeah good stuff thanks guys enjoy your day see you soon